hello, how are we? Nice to see you both. Thank you. When we first visited Villa Carmelina over 18 months ago, her Victorian charm had been most definitely marred by the passage of time. But now she's been restored, transformed and revitalised. So Scott, the colours in your property are absolutely exquisite and I'm just wondering how you actually arrived at choosing these colours. When we first bought the house, the people that owned it had bought it in the 1950s, so there was this beautiful overlay of 1950s colours. I took it on board because I actually like some of the colours, and I came up with this beautiful colour language that started in the beginning of the hallway of the house, and then it works its way through. The infill looks fantastic above the moon gate. Yeah, the moon gate's great, isn't it? That's come up spectacular, that match. Most people wouldn't you pick it. You have no idea, it's yeah. really successful, yeah. Do you feel that colour was really at the forefront of this design? Yeah, it was integral. Colour in architecture to me is part of the architecture. So I wanted to cocoon this space in the most beautiful old pink colour, then hinting up underneath, I love it, we call it lemon chiffon. It feels like there are some quite bold colour choices in here, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. So how have you achieved that? Because the terrace is big architectural bones with high ceilings, I could do walls and I could do the ceiling in these beautiful colours. But that was balanced out because the materials and finishes are very neutral. Terrazzo, hemlock, masonry blockwork walls. There's this really nice balance. So I know that most people really shy away from choosing colour. So what is your process when you uh, actually choose colour? This is my little colour book and it is a pattern book from Japan. And when I just want to go in and find inspiration, I just go through it and I will find a colour that triggers something. And you've got to go through that process of elimination of maybe doing a couple of colour samples, putting it up there and looking how that colour performs. And then you start to actually define what the colour palette is. I try to create all uplighting and it makes colour look absolutely beautiful. I know you're a big believer in sustainability in mm. design, so how do you see those two going hand in hand? One, being an architect, two, just being a person that is interested in the beginning with the environment about buying things. Everything in this house is like 25 years old. The furniture, they're the things that have been collected. I've never wanted to buy things that are throwaway and all the materials and finishes in Villa Carmelina was about creating sustainability. The paints that I chose, the objects in the space, the different types of materials and finishes are going to last. And then here we have the uh, original ah, ah, the Mexican pink. pink, you know? Eat it's pink. I look at that and I smile. It's just like, that's just magic. To me, colour is such an inexpensive way of changing a space. Explore it. It's not as hard as what people think. Just painting things white, it's like, well, you haven't really tried. What's the joy? Exactly. Colour brings so much joy. So much joy. Scott's colour choices are a unique fusion of both past and present. And by using coatings products that really are made to look better for longer, Villa Carmelina is a true testament to both uniqueness and longevity in design. Mm -hmm.